There is a core concept involved in many areas of scientific investigation, and that is this concept of energy. Apparently energy is some sort of invisible engine, the source of power that drives all functions of the universe, including all that goes on in our day-to-day -day existence here on Earth, the sounds, sights, and motions surrounding us, all possible because of energy. But what is it? What is energy? Well, it turns out that energy is an enigmatic concept, a mysterious phenomenon that refuses to be neatly defined. Some great minds have worked on this problem, including that of the brilliant 20th century physicist Richard Feynman. He says, It is important to realize that in physics today, we have no knowledge of what energy is. If Feynman doesn't know what energy is, it is not likely that my average mind will figure it out. Let's hear from Feynman again. Apparently something is revealed about energy when we study the sound sights and motions around us. There is a fact, or if you wish, a law, governing all natural phenomena that are known to date. The law is called the conservation of energy. It states that there is a certain quantity, which we call energy, that does not change in the manifold changes which nature undergoes. That is a most abstract idea, because it is a mathematical principle. It says that there is a numerical quantity which does not change when something happens. It is not a description of a mechanism or anything concrete. It is just a strange fact that we can calculate some number, and when we finish watching nature go through her tricks and calculate the number again, it is the same. Feynman is commenting that there are many manifestations of energy, and even though we don't know what energy is, we can represent it mathematically. And interestingly, if we monitor the energy of a system, no matter how complicated its behavior becomes, its energy remains the same. Energy is conserved. For instance, the scientists have come to a consensus that a moving object has kinetic energy, energy of motion, we can represent that energy with the formula 1 half mv squared. m representing the mass of the object, v its velocity. A ball with a mass of 0.5 kilograms moving at 30 meters per second has a kinetic energy of 225 joules. Another manifestation of energy involves gravity. An object on Earth sitting motionless above a reference point has a gravitational potential energy relative to that reference point. Again, we have a mathematical representation for the energy in a system like this. MGH, mass times acceleration due to gravity times the height of the object. In this example, we have a 0.5 kilogram ball sitting 3 meters above a reference point. Its gravitational potential energy is 0.5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity. Then this times 3 meters. This system represents 14.7 joules of energy. There are a number of manifestations of energy. Gravitational potential energy, kinetic heat, elastic, electrical, chemical, radiant, and nuclear energy. Not only can these various energies be represented mathematically, but they can transform from one type to another. Gravitational potential energy can become kinetic energy. And this brings us to the law of conservation of energy that Richard Feynman referred to. This law states, Energy can neither be created nor destroyed, just transformed from one form to another. This means that the 225 joules of energy in the moving ball is eternal. Even if the ball hits a wall and lays motionless on the ground, its energy still exists, no longer as kinetic energy, but now transformed into some other form of energy, forms including heat, the increased kinetic energy of moving molecules in the wall and ball. The temperature of the wall, air, and ball have all increased, kinetic energy has become heat energy. 
Experimental evidence for the conservation of energy came from the work of 19th century British physicist James Joule. He constructed this apparatus and demonstrated that the potential energy contained in a raised weight could be converted to heat energy, some of the first evidence for the conservation of energy. As an example, let's consider the energy possibilities in a pendulum. This is our starting point, the pendulum hanging motionless. I'll raise the pendulum bob. The bob is higher now than its rest point. It now has gravitational potential energy. But if energy can't be created or destroyed, where did the energy come from to raise the bob? It came from me. The chemical energy from food I have consumed has been converted to gravitational potential energy. I have given up some of my chemical energy to this pendulum system. When I release the bob, another energy conversion takes place. The gravitational potential energy is transforming to kinetic energy, energy of motion. As the pendulum swings down, gravitational potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy. At the bottom of the swing, all of the gravitational potential energy is gone fully converted to kinetic energy. The bob is moving at its maximum velocity. As the pendulum continues its swing, climbing higher, kinetic energy is being converted to potential energy. At the high point in its swing, the pendulum stops for a microsecond. At this point, it has no kinetic energy. That energy of motion has all been converted to gravitational potential energy. The law of conservation of energy tells us that the sum of potential energy and kinetic energy at any point is equal to the initial maximum potential energy of the system. As you know, if we walk away and come back in an hour, the pendulum will have stopped swinging. Where is that energy now? Again, we have a conversion of energy to heat, created by air friction and any friction in the pivot of the pendulum. Friction plays a big role in converting kinetic energy to heat energy. So, as Feynman says, we have been watching nature go through her tricks and noting that energy is conserved. The number is the same. How many tricks did nature go through to get us to the swinging pendulum? Let's work backwards. The kinetic energy came from the gravitational potential energy of the raised bob. The energy to raise the bob came from me, the result of my muscles being driven by chemical energy contained in the cornflakes I had for breakfast. The chemical energy in food comes from the sun, radiant energy driving photosynthesis in plants. Where does the sun's radiant energy come from? Albert Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, reveals a relationship between energy and matter. E represents energy, M is mass, and C, the speed of light. This formula tells us that mass, what we commonly call matter, can be converted to energy. The mass of the sun, through a nuclear process, is being converted to energy. This is the radiant energy that floods the earth. Most phenomena on our planet that involve some form of energy can be traced back to the sun. If our understanding of the relationship between mass and energy is correct, it would be reasonable to assume that the total energy in the universe is constant. Again, it just changes from one form to another on a grand scale. This discussion still does not tell us what energy actually is. Can we pull a blob of energy out of a moving object, then study and analyze it? Apparently not. According to Feynman, we do not have a picture that energy comes in little blobs of a definite amount. It is not that way. It is an abstract thing in that it does not tell us the mechanism or the reason for the various formulas. It is strange that something so integral to every function in the universe is so difficult to understand. Perhaps there will never be a revelation here. Energy may be nothing more than a great idea, 
some form of useful accounting that helps us make sense of the complex events around us. But the formula involved are powerful. They make it possible to analyze and describe the almost infinite events and interactions we see around us. As enigmatic as it is, this idea of energy is a remarkable creation of the human mind, possibly the greatest idea ever. We have more science and technology videos at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the videos link.